Hello, and welcome to the Feral Woman Podcast. I'm your host, Kelly Dawn, and today we're talking about how to create a spiritual practice that is wildly authentic to who you are. So if you're in a place right now where you are feeling called to incorporate some practices into your life to help you feel more connected to yourself and to the universe, but you also hate the idea of putting yourself into any kind of box spiritually, this episode is for you. Now, to give you a little bit of background information on my own journey, I have been obsessed with all things spiritual since I was a little kid. Thankfully, I was not raised in a religious home. Like, we identified as Christian, but I'm from a small town in Canada, so you're either Christian or you're Christian. That's kind of like the only option. But my family went to church on Christmas and Easter and the major holidays, but Thankfully, I never had religion forced down my throat, but I always felt this call to be connected to God. And of course, back then, everything I knew about God, it was all filtered through the lens of Christianity. So I saw God as this male figure, and I saw him as this this old bearded man in the sky who lived in the clouds, and it was someone I could talk to. And thankfully, I didn't have the, the fire and brimstone teachings given to me so I didn't have any fear of God but there is this this desire to know what this this spirit was and to have a relationship with it back when I was a kid I lived in the country and I noticed that this connection to God felt even stronger when I was out in the woods so I was given a lot of freedom as a child. I was allowed to play on our 11 acres and we had a little pond that I would go and sit beside. And I loved being surrounded by the trees and the animals. And I would spend hours and hours on end just sitting and immersing myself in this environment. As I got a little bit older, I started exploring some different things. Like I would go to the local bookstore and I I came across this book on divination and I thought this was the coolest thing ever because I was always really into witchcraft in like the movies and from TV shows. I was always really drawn to witchcraft and when I discovered this book on divination, I felt like I had won the spiritual lottery because I already had a belief in this force that I call God and through divination, I learned that we could communicate with it on an even deeper level and we could get information that could help us and I just thought it was all so fascinating. So I carried this book around with me like it was a fucking sacred text and I highlighted it and I made notes and I I was fully immersed into this world of divination and spirituality and a little while later I discovered Wicca. It was I forget the name of the book. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's called Witchcraft Today by Scott Cunningham. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's what it was. But what I do remember is that the first half of the book was on folk magic and the second half was on Wicca. And this was the very first time I had ever been exposed to an earth-based religion. And when I found out there were people out there who were honoring nature and they saw God as both male and female, again, I felt like my mind was blown in the best way possible. And so I fell right into witchcraft. I identified as a witch and this was around the age of 13, 14. And I practiced fairly consistently until my early adult years. Like the, the speeches I gave in high school for our class presentations, they were all centered around witchcraft. I remember doing one of my very first science fair projects was on how to work with crystals. And I am so happy and grateful. I had a very open-minded mom who I lived with at the time who encouraged me to explore this path. And like I grew up in a home where the teaching was, as long as you're not hurting yourself or other people, you can believe whatever you want to believe. So this was what I was doing throughout the, the majority of my teen years. And then when I got older, I was focused on doing the things I thought I had to do to be a good, successful adult. And so I went to school and got good grades in college. I worked for the family business. I had a boyfriend who I thought was great at the time. We bought a house together. I had a hot car. And I fell into this world of consuming. Like I was making a lot of money. I was spending a lot of money. 
but I was, I was miserable because I had done all of these things that I thought I had to do in order to be happy and successful, but I didn't feel happy or successful. I felt downright fucking miserable. And even though from the outside looking in, my life looked okay, I was a very well-functioning addict. Um, I was drinking heavily every single weekend. I was doing a lot of drugs. I was shopping all the time. I ended up going bankrupt and my life was just spiraling out of control. Now, around this time, I had also reconnected with a really good friend of mine. She was a cousin that I was friends with when we were younger. She ended up moving to the city that I lived in to go to university and we started hanging out and I knew she had been through some, some really rough times and she had experienced a powerful, positive transformation thanks to her relationship with Jesus and the time that she was spending in church. And I thought to myself, I am at rock fucking bottom here, like rock bottom. Maybe Jesus will fix things for me. Like that was, that was where my mindset was. I didn't, I didn't even think to go back to witchcraft because I didn't realize at that time that it was even the kind of spiritual path that could help me feel the connection that I was craving. I felt like Jesus can fix me and I had evidence with someone I was, I was very close to. I had evidence that it could work, like Christianity could quote unquote work for me and help me get better. And I actually do credit that period in my life for, for helping me stay alive, to be perfectly honest, because I was at a place where I was suicidal, I was heavily depressed, unmedicated at the time, and spiraling out of control. And thanks to my experience with Christianity, even though I was only in church for maybe nine months to a year, I was able to, to understand on a deep level that I have a purpose and that I'm valuable as a human being simply because I'm existing. Now, during this time, I loved, like absolutely loved everything about church. I loved the worship service. I loved the people. I loved going to church. Like everything felt so good. And I was feeling this spiritual connection. The problem was what I was reading in the Bible did not align with my personal values. I had a very hard time wrapping my head around the fact that I was supposed to love and worship a God who was a fucking tyrant and sending people to hell. And I, I struggled with this for a while and I tried to stick it out. I remember having conversations with some of the, the leaders or church, church elders, whatever you want to call them. And I was bringing my concerns to them. And I was always met with an answer that was some form of, well, you just have to trust in God. He works in mysterious ways and we're human. We're not supposed to understand his master plan. I was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not buying this. And I ended up leaving and going back to witchcraft. But then over the years, I kind of bounced back and forth between the two religions and I made myself very wrong for this. So if you're in a place where you're feeling like you can't stick with something spiritually, just know that you're not alone and any guilt you're feeling, any stress or anxiety for not being able to commit to a path is being placed upon you by outside forces. Like that is a story that you have possibly picked up from someone else, but it's not true. It does not have to be true. Any story that we are telling ourselves does not have to be true unless we want it to be. But back then, I did not understand mindset work. I had no concept of how our thoughts create our reality. All I knew is that I felt wrong and guilty because I couldn't stick with something. And this went on for a really long time. And eventually, I got myself to a place where I was like, fuck it. I'm going to identify as a witch because that feels the most true to me. And I also have a belief that witchcraft is a path of total, complete freedom, meaning if I want to go to church on a Sunday, I can do that. If I want to crack open a book on Buddhism or Hinduism or explore any other spiritual path, I have complete freedom within the world of witchcraft to do so. And that permission slip that I gave myself was so powerful because for the first time in a very long time, I stopped feeling like shit when it came to my spiritual practice. And while I believe there's a place for feeling uncomfortable and a place for growth within spirituality, I also believe 
overall, generally, a spiritual practice is supposed to support us. It's supposed to help us have a better experience as we navigate through this wonderful life of being a human. Now, fast forward a few more years, I started my coaching business. And when I started coaching, I was focusing a lot on manifestation and teaching the law of attraction. And a lot of the the mainstream manifestation principles that are talked about, like the nice, light, fluffy stuff, because these were all part of what I was doing in my own personal practice with witchcraft at the time. I was learning more about quantum physics and how our thoughts create our reality and understanding these things. And I was seeing results, not just on a personal level, but also in my business. Back then I had a a housekeeping business and I was diving deep into these practices and principles and applying them and realizing like, holy shit, this stuff works and I need to tell other people about it. And that was what launched my coaching business. And that felt okay for a while, but then I've, I've always struggled to keep my personal spiritual practice out of my business. And so that started to seep in more and more. And I wanted to talk about the specific things I was doing as a witch. But I had so much fear. I had a ton of fear of what people would think. I thought they're not going to, they're not going to take me seriously. They're not going to like me. They're going to get turned off and they're going to think I'm weird and scary. And I had all of these, these silly stories coming up. But I went ahead anyway. I started sharing more about what I was doing behind the scenes personally. And that ended up launching my, my brand into something that was completely centered around witchcraft. Like all of my courses, all of my programs, like everything was centered around not just magical practices, but also the empowerment that goes along with claiming the word witch. So things were running very smoothly. Everything felt like it was as it should be in my life, my business, everything just felt so fucking good. And then (laughs) as things go, there was a little there was a little spiritual wrench thrown into things and i started to feel completely disconnected to my personal practice and again if you are in a space where you you feel sometimes like you are so plugged into something and it feels so fucking good and then you wake up one day and you're like where did it go where did that connection go you're not alone this is something that happens to people on all types of spiritual paths So I was in this place where I was feeling really disconnected. At first, I thought it was a dry spell, so I just kind of ignored it for a little while. And then it got to the point where I felt called to talk about this publicly because it didn't feel right for me to be marketing myself as a witch and teaching these things if I wasn't doing any of it in my own life at the time. So I made a little pivot in my business and I removed spirituality and I just focused back on mindset and energetics. And back then I was primarily business coaching. What I was doing behind the scenes in my personal practice though was something I had never done and that was absolutely nothing. So for the first time since I was about 13 or 14 years old, I wasn't worried about meditating. I wasn't worried about spiritually seeking. I wasn't worried about having any kind of connection whatsoever. I allowed myself to remain in this it was like a spiritual limbo. The, the image of the hangman card is coming to mind here where I just, I just sat back and I said, you know what? I'm going to be guided in whatever direction I'm meant to be guided in. I'm not going to make myself wrong for it. I'm not going to force myself to identify as anything or force myself onto any path. I'm going to remain completely open. And that time period was so valuable. It was, I was there for a few months and eventually I was guided back to witchcraft. But this time it was, it was if I had an even deeper understanding of myself and these practices and everything felt like, it felt like I was coming back to the practice in a more, I'm trying to think of the right word. We're just going to go with the word fulfilling way. That's not, that's not exactly the word that I'm, I feel is right for this, but that's what we're going to do just so we can keep on, keep on with the show. And so I came back to things, things felt even more aligned. So getting back to this place of you creating a spiritual practice that is authentically yours. If you're in a place where you're feeling maybe called in different directions and 
you want to you want to have something in your life that helps you feel connected. I invite you to give yourself permission to move in whatever direction you want to move in and ask yourself, if I could do absolutely anything, absolutely anything today, what would I do to feel more connected to myself and the world around me? And then just see what comes through. A a big part of this is giving ourselves permission to remain open and following those intuitive nudges that we're getting. So if you do this and you're like, oh man, I'm feeling really called to go out and put my hands on the tree in my front yard. That is what your next aligned move is. If you are feeling called to connect with a particular god or goddess or angel or go explore working with crystals or go explore some type of energy work, that is going to be your next move. And you are always going to be guided in the right direction, even if things don't make sense. And giving yourself this freedom and permission is what's going to allow you to create a practice that is uniquely yours. It does not matter what other people think. It does not matter what their opinions are of what you're doing because it's, it's your path and your path alone. And I understand that we live in a world where a lot of people don't have religious freedom. And if you do have it, if you live in a part of the world where you are free to explore and you are free to believe whatever you want to believe, please, like, please use that freedom. It's there for you. And then what you might notice is that there are some common themes. There are some common practices that you want to bring into your life. And there are no rules around what those have to look like. Like you can mix and match, you can cherry pick from different spiritual paths. Again, this is you and spirit. This is you and the universe working together. And I have a core belief that we we get to believe things that support us. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense to other people. It doesn't matter if other people think it's silly or they think we're doing it wrong. If it's helping us have a better experience, then why the fuck not? So that is what I wanted to share with you today. If you're in a place where you you are craving this connection, know that it is available for you, but you need to take the first step. You need to move in the direction that you're being called and allowing yourself to remain open and just following those nudges is going to be the best thing because you're always going to be guided and led exactly, exactly where you need to go. All right, I hope you have an amazing, amazing rest of your day. If you want to connect further, you can find me over on Instagram at I am Kelly Dawn, and I can't wait to speak with you in the next episode.